Leonard Walton here. No, I'm lying. It's from Richard Arnold. But once again, we're looking at Poodles Hannaford in Better Behave. And I better behave while I'm doing this commentary. Written and directed by the ubiquitous Les Goodwins, least ubiquitous for this DVD. Photographed by Harry Forbes. And that's one thing you know that you can say about the Weiss Brother comedies, uh, at least looking at them in this sort of condition, that they were very well photographed. Not only well photographed, another great thing about Weiss Brother comedies is that because they were a bit on the low budget side, you get wonderful looks at LA, Hollywood, Edendale, Los Angeles locations from the 1920s. Uh, because, God forbid, the Weisses wanted to shell out for you know that much studio time. So these comedies are definitely designed to be shot on the streets. And so anyone into LA history just gets some incredible looks at uh, Southern California climate, I guess. There's William McCall, who was a, uh, another old Senate veteran. Boy, I used to see him a lot. In, uh, usually played dads or policemen or that sort of stuff. Goes back to, I guess, Larry Seaman. He, uh, he, of course, was in vaudeville, was part of the McCall Trio, and then got into pictures. I think working with Larry Seaman. He may have been at Keystone before that, but you see him with, with uh, Seaman at Vitagraph and about 1918 on, once Seaman came out to the coast and uh, continued to work, uh, like I said, for Senate, been through the 20s and Weiss Brothers, and even Seaman, and like it happened one night, I think 1934. The policeman's Joe Young, another uh, Senate veteran, actually, had gone to work for Senate uh, around 1924, played all sorts of things, later uh, starred in the Mike and Ike series for Universal. If he looks halfway familiar, that's because he is the brother of Robert Young. That's right, that Robert Young, Marcus Welby, MD, the leading man uh, through, I guess, 30s, 40s, 50s, onward into TV. We're looking at uh, Larchmont Avenue is where they're working here, which was a very popular location, especially with the Weiss brothers. Uh, this is the Wallace Drug Company, 101 North uh, Larchmont. This is off of First Avenue, but that Roy Tanzine, you see the Wallace Drug Company in a lot of silent comedies. I think part of the reason that Larchmont was so popular with um, silent comedy companies, it was basically almost a backlot uh, on the streets. It, 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 was, it teed off, it dead-ended at Melrose. And basically it gave you, you know, a, a totally average, uh, somewhat shut off street. And uh, you, you had the trolley lines going through the middle of it, which also gave you a little extra. You can see the studio, the dance there behind William McCall. That's right across the street from the Wallace Drug Company. And uh, it, it, you know, it, like I said, that street hasn't really changed almost even though they've taken the trolley lines out and they've refaced some of the buildings you can still see a lot of a lot of the uh, where poodles hannaford and joe young and all these guys walked around there's betty welsh the uh, leading lady and uh, now we're working in inside the studio i'm not sure who the uh, the gentleman's playing her boyfriend the father's tom dempsey once again another senate veteran uh again played a lot of father figures uh authority figures, um, <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, most uh, historians will remember him today, or Chaplin fans will remember, he plays the fight promoter who gets Chaplin to box with Hank Mann in City Lights. And he, he, worked, he worked pretty steadily, both at Senate and supporting roles. Uh, he died, I believe, 1947. Part of the reason that you see a lot of Senate people working in the Weiss Brother comedies in this period, which is 1928, was, oh, there's Harry Martell once again, who's sort of our Weiss regular. But anyway, I digress. The, the reason that you see a lot of Senate people is in late 1927, Max Senate shut down his studios in Edendale to uh, build a new studio in Studio City that is still there actually. It's part of CBS. They shoot a lot of sitcoms there. And in doing that, he shut down all production for about six months, canceled all of his contracts, basically laid everybody off. So suddenly you had Senate <laughs> employees flooding the rest of the film world. And Senate had great people. I mean, not only great comedy actors, stock company people, but 
technical people. You had uh, a lot of Senate's technical staff who were great with special effects. If you've ever seen those Senate comedies, moved to places like Warner Brothers and Columbia Pictures, and the writing staff did as well. And that's why, actually, you know, Warner Brothers and Columbia were both sort of B picture studios at the time, but suddenly <laughs> the quality of a lot of their products started started to go right up because they had a lot of Senate people working. A lot of them stayed there. Senate didn't get them all back. But, uh, but anyway, you can figure that, you know, again, players like, supporting players like William McCall and Joe Young and Tom Dempsey were all perfectly happy to pick up a few extra bucks working in the Weiss comedies for a few days, and it was a few extra bucks. The, the day players here were probably making $3 to $5 a day, which was not a bad living. You know, then you could, you know, you could rent an apartment for $12 a month, but uh, it, still, it, it was not great money. Now we're back on Larchmont again. Now Poodles is doing a, a gag that you... Yeah, a little, a, a short version of a gag you see done in things like Harold Lloyd's Number, Please. And there's a Billy West comedy called Lions Busy where are fighting multiple people to get into the phone booths. But again, we're back on Larchmont here. Again, that, that studio of the dance building is very easily recognizable. I think you saw it in the Cockeyed family as well. Now here's an interesting little bit of film trickery. Now we're shooting this angle of the shot at the park bench with the dog on Larchmont. But we're going to cut in a minute here and it's going to be picked up somewhere else because basically the Wallace Drug Company is, is right behind them on this <laughs> behind this park bench but now suddenly we're in a residential area so this was obviously picked up on another day somewhere else but uh, that's movie magic folks you know, that's the kind of thing uh, you know Orson Welles used to do with alternate shots in different countries I, guess, I think it's actually just up the road uh, on large front because everything north of first street is residential there's tiny lipsum Again, without his mustache. Again, picking up a day rate. Probably, probably spent a couple hours just beating on poodles and disappearing there. You know, Poodles Hannaford never did make it really big in the motion picture business. This series for Weiss Brothers was actually you know, the longest series that, that he did in terms of two real comedies, and he only did one season. He did appear in two Broadway shows, uh, The Circus Princess in 1927, and then he was part of Billy Rose's Jumbo in 1935. But Poodles made you know, the majority of his living and his fortune uh, in the circus. And Continued to be a headliner with uh, Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus all through the 30s. Worked uh, various other circuses. Well, again, was a headline, top line circus act. Continued to be. Uh, he did occasionally make appearances in films in the 30s. Uh, in fact, usually in a circus setting. Uh, his horse act appears in the 1935 Shirley Temple picture, Our Little Girl, which is set in a circus. And... Uh, you get a very, very good look at the act there, but, but again, the circus was his life, and uh, that's that's where he continued. But in the off season, he'd be back in Hollywood picking up uh, money, either working as a consultant uh, for uh, horse stunts, occasionally, uh, you know, a consultant for circus pictures. But uh, also, you see him. Occasionally in films, he plays the stage driver in uh, San Antonio with Errol Flynn, 1945 picture. He gets to play a clown in Republic's The Red Pony, 1949. You see him playing a soldier, cavalry soldier, in Springfield Rifle with Gary Cooper in 1952. But he just, uh, you know, he would, he would work when he could. And uh, it was probably a lot safer than falling off horses every day. So you know, not much to, he could complain about uh, Here's Joe Young again, coming back to abuse him. Now, now, so Joe Young got Robert Young his start in, in motion pictures, uh, getting him some bit parts uh, at Senate in the late 20s. His own career, I 
mean, he was busy, but it was never spectacular. In fact, changed his name to, believe it or not, Roger Moore in the 40s and uh, continued to work under that name for a while. Finally retired, uh, got into real estate, and then moved to Hawaii. I believe he passed away in the 1980s. But uh, he and Robert Young apparently by that time were not on speaking terms <laughs> for some reason or another. Uh, not sure it's really any of our business. But he uh, never had the career, certainly, that his younger brother had. But uh, you see him in some our gang comedies in the 30s. And uh, uh, I said he, he was at least a steady working actor for three or four decades. See him in some television stuff in the 50s. Now, again, this is, I think, just north of... First Street on Largemont. Not sure that the Weiss brothers didn't actually have a small studio that they rented uh, on Largemont, because you see in the, the Izzy and Lizzie short Movie Mania, a uh, studio that appears to be on that street. But uh, when we went and actually looked around Larchmont, uh, that area is now office buildings. It's been rebuilt. But uh, there may have indeed been a studio. Now, there's a reverse shot. And putting those pants on. You can always tell reverse shot because uh, it's kind of the way like the fabric swings there. Now I've said that the Weiss brothers were notorious for lifting gags from other comics and here is a classic example of it. Again he just went by Larchmont Motors there. He's running all over the street but here it is. This is a gag repeated or borrowed from Buster Keaton's Sherlock Jr. Yeah, where Buster rides the handlebars of the motorcycle and Poodles is <laughs> doing it himself. Again, heading up uh, Larchmont toward Beverly Boulevard. Uh, that's where uh, the Safeway... The Safeway store is actually at Larchmont and Melrose. That's where it tees off. But, uh, yeah. Again, this is the kind of thing you can expect living in... Uh, Los Angeles to seeing comedians going down the street <laughs> doing this stuff on pretty much any given day. Amazing how wide those streets are. They are not that wide now. There's the Safeway store. There's Melrose. <laughs> There's Melrose, but then suddenly he's back down toward first in the other shot, going by the studio of the dance three times. This old guy's staying in front of the Largemont Electric Company, which is at 148 North Largemont. Yeah, I, I'm not even sure they even like close down the streets. Maybe they did. Maybe this was a Sunday. Uh, but there's obviously a lot of traffic here. Joe Young is about to become involved. So, actually some pretty intricate camera work here. But I mean this you know <laughs> this had to be upsetting general business during the during the day. And so I'm assuming that there was, you know, there was somehow, even in, in these days, the, the comedy companies were arranging. This is the back alley behind Larchmont on the west side. This actually hasn't changed that much because most of the backs of these buildings haven't changed. But this is somewhere else. You see a street number there, 5109. Well, well, like I said, Poodles Hannaford continued to uh, perform his horse act with the circus uh, into the 1950s, till finally age started to creep up on him. I think, you know, once you're past middle age, falling off horses on a daily basis <laughs> it probably gets wearing on you. But he continued with his son, uh, George Hannaford, and the Hannaford family doing the family act, and uh, Poodles would uh, be the whip handler, the trainer, on the, on the ground. In fact, you can see Poodles and his son George doing their act in the 1954 film Ring of Fear, which recently came out on DVD starring Pat O'Brien and Mickey Spillane, which, again, is a circus picture. But uh, in the late 50s, Poodles finally retired from the circus business. Uh, he and his wife Grace moved to uh, upstate New York, where he worked in, I believe it was a town called Glen Falls Amusement Park called Frontier Town. And uh, he was there from the late 50s all through the 60s, playing 
an old prospector character, which is basically the park's clowning mascot. He'd just wander around, greet people, and uh, I think he owned a chunk of the park as well, but uh, that was his happy retirement. Of course, the Hannaford family continued in the circus business. Tommy Hannaford ran the Hannaford Family Circus until just a few years ago, which toured with the Shriners for decades. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, the Hannaford family continues to be a, uh, a good old name in the circus business. Now, speaking of uh, borrowing, we're just about uh, to have one more borrowed gag getting the setup for it. I can see the, the laundry bag coming up, but this is going to be a gag that actually <laughs> has been done uh, in several How Roach. In fact, it was lifted from two How Roach comedies that were made this the year this was made, 1928. Uh, Laurel and Hardy's Habeas Corpus and then Dumb Daddies with Max Davidson. But uh, I'm just warning you, I'll point out the gag when it comes. But uh, yeah, Poodles Hannaford passed away December 9th of 1967. He's buried in Glen Falls, New York under a really nice memorial that has an image of him doing his famous step off off of a horse. And uh, a nice tribute. He's well remembered. He's of course in the Circus Clown Hall of Fame. That mustache looks more like trained nose hairs than, uh, <laughs> than a real mustache. awful lot of setup for this gag, but, uh, yep, here we go, the body in the bag gag, is a, a, a popular 1928 gag, the, uh, the Weiss brothers definitely assumed that these films were not going to get much viewing in uh, the big cities or in Los Angeles, or I would think Hal Roach would have, uh, initiated a lawsuit, a cease and desist. Now here comes the gag, and of course what the gag is, is you know, a leg will be sprouting from the, uh, the bottom of the laundry bag, and then people will start to wonder. Yep, back at the Wallace Drug Company. That's now a Washington Mutual Bank building. It's been completely refaced. Yeah, Joe Young, for, for being a rather normal leading man type, was rather versatile in uh, comedy situations. So he said, you're going to see him again. One of the Hairbreath Harrys, I believe, Rudolph's Revenge. And you might not even recognize him. Now, th this, is, this is right out of Dumb Daddy's Max Davids. There's the S&G Electric Company at 150 North Larchmont. I believe that's the, the west side of Larchmont. But yeah, this is uh, right out of Dumb Daddies with Max Davidson, which you can see in Robert Youngson compilation uh, that came out in the 60s called Laurel and Hardy's Laughing Twenties. This looks like a Sunday morning. Things look a bit more deserted around Larchmont. Oh boy, right there. You see it all over the place there. I guess we should go put some plaques up. Poodles Hannaford did body in the sack gag at this corner. Yeah, probably not. Now we're back at Largemont Motors. Well, like I said, you know, Poodles Hannaford not your most well-known name to film fans, but circus fans still revere him, and uh, you should too. A fine comedian, even when he's not doing horse stuff, as you know, like in this picture. But uh, I'm glad that uh, we've been able to uh, give you the opportunity to take a look at uh, 
somebody who uh, probably should have had a better uh, better run in motion pictures than he did, but did a good job even working for the Weisses. Hope you enjoyed it.